Hello and welcome to Nitrania Game Club. My name is Branis Saberets and in this video I'm going to give you some basic strategy tips for the game called Barrage. Now, there are two reasons why I decided to do this video. First, this game is fantastic. It's phenomenal. I love this game. It's so great. It's becoming one of my most favorite games of all time, literally. It's so good. However, second reason, it's a heavy, heavy, heavy strategy game. And you can easily lose the game in the first round. You can still recover, but it takes a lot of the game time. And by the time you recover, your opponents might be in the middle of the scoring track. So for some people, this might be a little bit frustrating experience, but this game deserves a great experience. So even for the newcomers, for the people who play this game for the first time, I decided to make this video to give you some basic strategy tips so that you can really enjoy the game and have a chance of scoring a decent amount of victory points. So let's get started. So there's a couple of things you need to look at even before you start the game. First is the company board and your executive officer. Company boards are unique uh, and although they have the same structure and the same layout, these bonuses are unique, these are different, except for the last column. This is the same on, on each company board, but all other bonuses are unique. And you need to know what kind of bonuses are on your company board and where they are placed. You will not be able to uncover all those bonuses, that's impossible. But to win the game or to score a decent amount of victory points, you definitely need at least some of those bonuses. And especially the bonuses for the production are usually very important. Then look at your executive officer and make sure you understand what the special ability does for you. It can be very important and I'll talk about them in a minute. And finally, look at the energy track and these end of round bonuses and also the objective tile. You will probably not be able to score a lot of victory points for each of these end of round bonuses. However, try to focus on uh, end of round four and round five bonuses because by the end of round four, in this example, you should have quite a lot of elevations built already. Or you can have six, eight, uh, or even 10 contracts fulfilled by the uh, end of round five. However, make sure you can actually produce enough energy to, to score full amount of victory points for that. And also try to have this objective tile in mind as well, because if you can score 15 or even just 10 victory points at the end of the game, it could be the difference between winning and losing in this game. One of the most frequent questions is, what should I do first? There are so many options out there. What should I do first? I would say, there are three things you have to keep in mind or you, three things you need to do at the start of the game. First, get some contracts. You need them. I'll talk about them in a minute. Second, build something. Something somewhere, we'll get to that as well. And third, get an advanced technology tile from the patent office. Obviously, this is only valid if you play the advanced game, but I would, I would strongly advise play the, ad, play the advanced game right off the bat. It's not that difficult and it brings more more depth and more strategy to the game. So get a contract, um, build something and get the advanced technology tile. Contracts can give you huge bonuses and even these green, these basic contracts can give you like free base over here. Here you get your construction wheel turning. So those contracts save you time, they save you resources. That's why Every time you produce energy, you must, must, must fulfill a contract. If you don't fulfill a contract when you produce energy, you're wasting your actions, you're wasting your time. That's why one of the first thing you have to do at the start of the game, get some contracts. Second, you have to build something somewhere. And now the question is what and where? Very often people start with the basis somewhere or they start building the powerhouses in, in various locations. However, they usually don't realize that the most limiting factor is actually the conduit. In order to build the conduit, you need to pay two excavators for each production value of the conduit. So with the six starting excavators, you can only build maximum three production value conduit. So under normal circumstances, if you don't have any special ability, these production value five and production value four conduits are basically inaccessible to you. And by the way, the production value five conduits have these red pipes 
Production value 4 conduits have the orange pipes. Production value through 3 have the uh, re uh, yellow pipes. Production value 2 conduits have these green pipes and production value 1 have these gray pipes. So even if it's very tempting to start using this neutral dam, make sure you don't build your powerhouse here because you would need a conduit production value 4 which at the start of the game you cannot build at all. I have already seen several players doing this mistake, building a powerhouse, trying to connect it to the dam through the conduit which they cannot really build. Then both the bases and conduits require excavators. When you build the, f the base first, you will need at least three excavators. So if you use those three ex excavators, then with the remaining three excavators you can only build level one conduit. Unless you have some special power, but let's say you don't have that special power, you can only build level one conduit. And that's why I'm saying conduits are the most limiting factor at the start of the game when you start building something. So in order to start producing quite a lot of energy, try to build conduit with the production value 3. You don't have to build your own dams first, you can leverage the uh, neutral dams, potentially building your own dams at the same basin and using the same conduit obviously. However, I would suggest don't build the conduit first because your greedy opponent might be the first to build a powerhouse, he can use your conduit and even though you would get some victory points and credits, this guy would be the one producing energy and fulfilling contracts and gaining bonuses. So don't start with the conduit and build the powerhouse first. And then when you have a powerhouse, you can build the conduit. Then, if possible, try to build two structures of the same type in one turn so that you can start gaining these bonuses. In order to do that, you will need technology tiles. If you play the basic game, and let's say I would want to build a second conduit, I can use the wild tile. However, if you play the advanced game, you don't have the wild tile. You have to buy the advanced technology tile from the patent office and that's actually the third thing you should do at the start of the advanced game. Now let's briefly talk about these special abilities of executive officers. This one is actually great for construction. You can spend three credits for any one missing machinery when you construct buildings. So this special ability is very helpful if you want to build this production value 4 conduit at the start of the game. And for example, here's the beautiful synergy. If you build this conduit, second conduit, you can start generate credits at the start of each round, which actually help you to build more buildings using your credits. This special ability is also very helpful with the construction because it allows you to copy one of the existing tiles or technology tiles in a construction wheel. So let's say I want to build a second powerhouse. I don't have the advanced technology tile. I don't have the wild tile, I can use this copy power, I don't have to put any technology tile here, I need to spend resources and I can build the second powerhouse. This one allows you to build bases in the mountains a lot cheaper. So you can be the first one to build in the mountains and catch those water drops or you can build in the mountains and start building your level 3 dam over there and potentially utilizing high production value conduits. With the level 3 dam in the mountains and the high production value conduit, you can easily score national contracts, even more of them. This one is actually great for building such a high production value conduits because you don't need excavators, you need concrete mixers, so it's a lot easier to build production, level, production value 4 or 5 conduits. If you cannot afford such a high production value conduit and you have this special ability, you can also easily score national contracts. And let me show you how. If you have a level 3 dam and the conduit with the production value 3 and you have 3 water drops, that's 3 times 3 only 9 energy. Now with some production bonuses and maybe the company board bonuses, you can get to 12 11, 12, which may not be enough for uh, national contracts. However, with this special ability, the level 3 dams can hold up to 4 water drops, 
which means you can multiply four water drops with a production value 3, that's already 12, and with some bonuses can easily be 13, 14, 15, and you can easily score national contracts. So you don't need conduits with the value 4 or even 5, you can easily score national contracts even with the conduits with the production value 3. That saves you time, effort and resources. Now this special ability is super special ability for an early game. If you produce energy and if you produce less than 4 energy, you actually produce 4. Now let me show you what it means. Have you ever thought about what is this production value 1 conduit good for? Well, it's exactly for this special ability. If you use one water drop and produce one energy, you actually produce four. And with four energy, you can fulfill a contract. And if you fulfill a contract and get a huge bonus, well, that's a huge boost at the start of the game. Now, if you produce one energy, you actually produce four, and then you add the bonus from the production action, maybe you will produce six energy, and you can, with this one water drop, you can actually fulfill yellow contracts and get even more powerful bonuses. And what's even better, this neutral level three dam can hold up to three water drops. And if you produce energy, you don't have to use all of them. You can take as many water drops as you want. So you can easily take just one and fulfill a contract. With the next production action, you still produce one energy, but that's actually four and you can fulfill another contract. And with the next production action, again, you produce at least four energy and potentially fulfill another contract. Considering you do this at the start of the game, in the early game, that's a tremendous jump start and it's a fantastic start of the game. And finally, the last special ability from the base game, this one allows you to copy existing uh, or other special abilities in the game. So make sure you understand what those other special, special abilities can do for you and utilize them as you want. So in the mid game, you have to build up. You need to start producing a lot of energy because without producing energy, you will not score those end of round bonuses. So make sure you build up at least one level three dam. Ideally with the production value three or four conduit or even five if you can afford it. So at least one level three dam and a high production value conduit then you need to start watching for the objective tile and you need to understand what you need to do, build up towards that. Uh, look at the level four, level five, level five end of round bonuses and build towards that. If you need to build elevations, build elevations. If you need to build conduits, build conduits. Just make sure you maximize your end of round bonuses at the level four, level five. And still you can produce energy. And last but not least, the player who produces the most energy during the round gets the six victory points. So if you have the good engine running and you produce enough energy, you can score these six victory points, maybe three, maybe four times uh, out of five. And that's quite a lot of points as well. 18, 24 points is really not bad. So the energy production is really the most important factor of this game, the most important element. So make sure you do produce enough energy and use the water management to add more water drops to the streams which fill your, your dams or the neutral dams that you are using. And there's one more beautiful thing you can do. You can build the conduit in a strategic place even though you will not use that conduit, but it will be heavily used by other players. For every water drop that would flow through that conduit, you get one victory point and one credit. In one of my games, one of the players scored 16 victory points through just one conduit and obviously 16 credits. That was a lot of points and a lot of money. And then in the late game, it's time to score a lot of victory points. One of the ways how to score quite a lot of victory points are these advanced technology tiles which provide victory points. This one gives me three victory points for each powerhouse build, including this one. So if I would use it now and build the fourth powerhouse, 
that's 12 victory points. Then obviously try to score the national contracts. Not only they give you victory points, but they also give you powerful, powerful bonuses, which you can, you can still use in the fourth or fifth round. Then score the end of round bonuses. So if you have built up in the mid game towards these bonuses, you can also score a lot of victory points. And if you can manage to do so, if you build the last conduit or last elevation or last base, you can score seven points immediately. And if you build it in the fourth round, you get that bonus in the fourth round immediately and then at the start of the fifth round. So by building the last structure, you actually score 47 or 14 victory points. Not bad as well. That's why I'm saying in the mid game, build up towards these huge scores. So that's it. As you can see, I put a lot of focus on the early game because if you make uh, good decisions in the early game, you have a good chance of scoring a lot of victory points at the end of the game. And even if you don't win the game, at least you will not be far behind the leaders and, and you will enjoy the game. You will have the feeling of accomplishment because if you make all these things running and, and putting all together and, and running the engine, producing a lot of energy, scoring a lot of victory points, it's it's very enjoyable game if you make it running, if you're not far, far behind. And that's the purpose of this video, to make sure you enjoy it, you can start well and, and uh, enjoy the game as much as we do. Every time we finish the game, we spend long, long minutes, 10, 15 minutes discussing it. And for me, that's the sign of a great game, fantastic game. When we keep thinking about it, talking about it, long after we finish the game, it's a great game. So I hope you find this information useful. However, the rules are to be broken. Sometimes if you find a good combo, uh, it's good to break these principles, which I just outlined, and, and maybe you will score a fantastic number of victory points just by breaking these rules. Up to you. I love discovering the options in this game. I love discovering the nuances of, of, the, of this design. As I said, phenomenal, fantastic game for me. If you like this video, um, please like it. Uh, if you like the series, if you like my, my show, just subscribe. Uh, I'm very happy for, for any subscriber. And thank you very much for watching and hope to see you next time.